this right here is the Motorola Edge. So let's talk about it. This Motorola Edge is by far the most edgy phone that I've ever used in my entire life. I mean, if you see it in comparison with the Note 20 Ultra, which also happened to have a curved display, the difference is much noticeable. So if I have to describe this in one sentence, then that would be immersive but disturbingly curved. I'm saying this because when you're watching movies and stuff, this display is impressive. But whenever you want to read some web page or pretty much anything other than media consumption, the letters on this device kinda roll off to the edges, disturbing the flow. But Motorola kinda understood this and gave the option to us users. So if we don't want that edge to disturb us, we can click on this small button to turn that off. That's really sweet. But apart from that, Moto used this edge screen for a number of cool features. One, you can swipe down to open the notification panel or you can swipe up for reasons. And two is this cool charging animation which keeps on filling while the device is charging. And three is this little button to the edge. You see that? This can be customized to open as much as six apps or shortcuts. Now coming to the display, it's a 6.7 inch OLED 1080p panel with a 90Hz refresh rate and is HDR10 certified. So punchy colors, deep blacks, smooth screen, whatever you can think of, it's all there. Oh wait, I forgot to tell you one thing. This one also comes with a headphone jack. That's kinda rare these days, right? Now, before moving into the design, let me tell you, I'm a huge fan of subtle colors like grey, black, etc. I mean, it's my personal preference, but to my liking, this design is on point. It's excellent. But point to be mentioned, this is high quality plastic, but not glass. This mobile also comes with splash repellent coating, so small splashes of water should not cause any damage. Now let's talk about the speakers on this device. It comes with a stereo speaker setup, one at the bottom, one at the top. It's loud and clear, crisp. But apart all of that, there is one thing that I would want to mention and that is the speakers on this phone is really huge, it's big. but. The sound not only comes from this bottom speaker, but it also penetrates out through the glass. Now, you could ask me, what's the big deal in that? There's a problem. The problem is, whenever I'm holding my mobile like this or something like this, I kind of feel that I'm stopping the sound that's coming out from this glass. For example, assume that I'm holding the mobile like this. So, I really feel that I'm stopping the sound that's coming from here and I'm only listening the sound that's coming from here. And for example, if I'm holding like this, I kind of feel that I'm listening more sound from this side comparing to this side. It's irritating. Now the chipset. This is powered by Snapdragon 765G coupled with 4 or 6 GB of RAM and 128 or 256 GB of internal storage. And as far as the performance is concerned, it's a decent performer. Not bleeding edge or something, but very smooth in terms of day-to-day -day performance and can run most of the games. I mean, most of the games. But still, in some scenarios, you might see some lag while dealing with very high-end games and very high-end graphics. And also, this mobile comes with UFS 2.1 storage, which is a slower storage. And I would have loved to see UFS 3.0 at least because this is a costly phone. But that's not there. Now, if you know Moto or used any Moto mobile, you would have known that they are really good at gestures. And this phone has a bunch of them. Twist for camera, chop for flashlight, and cross swipe for assistant. And all the other edge gestures that I've mentioned already. Now let's talk about the cameras of this mobile. It has a 64 megapixel primary lens, 8 megapixel telephoto camera, 16 megapixel ultra wide sensor and a time of light sensor for 3D and depth tracking. So let's look at some sample shots. These are some of the normal daylight shots 
and in good lighting the images come out with lot of details by that i mean crisp and clear and it also has that natural colors instead of bumping up the saturation and making it artificial which i really like the dynamic range and exposure were also on point and coming to portraits they come out with decent background blur it's still artificial and could go wrong sometimes like here but on the whole it's decent now let's move on to night shots the night photos are good in decent lighting okay i mean look at this shot here the sensor has a lot of scope to collect the light as there is so much of artificial light set up here and in scenarios like this the image do come out well but as soon as you move to really low light with minimal light source wait hear me again i said minimal it's not completely dark but very minimal so in scenarios like that the camera starts to go out of focus and whatever i do how many times ever i try i was not successful in bringing the subject to focus so these are the out of focus shots and since i saw this issue live what i felt was that this was a kind of software issue and could be fixed with an ota but for now at the time of recording this video i have not received any ota for the camera so we have to wait and see now this is the ultra wide shot sample wide and max zoom which is 10x and on the front side it has a single punch hole 25 megapixel camera so on to the samples they have good details they are sharp clear yeah they are good dynamic range is not so impressive but that should not be a deal breaker but all of this is under good lighting but as soon as you move to the night light the camera starts to struggle a lot and selfies were not at all good under night light let's have a look at some video samples now and also there is an interesting thing that i wanted to mention and that is about software updates this mobile is currently running android 10 and motorola promised just one year software updates and that leaves us with android 11 yes android 11 so if you are planning to buy this mobile this is something that you should definitely have in mind i mean who would want to buy a mobile which does not guarantee security updates right now the final one the battery it has a massive 4500 mAh cell and it can easily last you a day but on the charging front it's only 18 watt i mean it would be a great addition if they choose to go with 30 watt or 40 watt or at least 25 watt but yeah it's not there so finally to sum up all my thoughts into one single sentence that would be this is a great phone to buy but a costly phone as well i mean for a price tag of 50000 indian rupees i am not going to recommend this mobile at all but if you buy this mobile you won't regret purchasing this but still there are better phones out there for this price so guys that's it for this video if you guys like this video please hit that like button and also subscribe the channel for more amazing tech content i hope to see you in my next video